Hi everyone, I hope life is treating you kindly. I'm Libby Mira and thank you for joining me today. Welcome to all my crafty friends, new and returning. I always look forward to this time of the week when we get together for some crafting fun. If you're new to my channel, I'm glad you found your way over here and I invite you to check out more of my content. I love sharing my projects with you all and I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to spend a few crafty moments with me. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. By hitting that little bell, you'll get notified every time I post something new and you won't miss out on any of the crafty goodness. I wanted to properly welcome some new faces that have come over from Reddit. My younger brother gave me a shout out a few weeks ago and at first I wasn't sure what was going on because some people assumed he was my sister. I don't have a sister so it took me a minute to figure out what people were talking about. Anyway, a very happy welcome to you all. I hope you enjoy your visit and I look forward to getting to know you. Some of you have already left me some wonderful comments which I'm happy to see. If you have any questions please reach out and don't be afraid to share your lovely work with me. I'm on several social media platforms and I really enjoy seeing everyone's work. Moving right along, in today's video I'm sharing a really cute ghost themed Halloween card. Now if I'm honest, I really don't send Halloween cards. Maybe one day I will. However, I wanted to show you this card for two reasons. The first being the technique can be applied to virtually any theme and two, you can actually use Halloween themed cards for people celebrating birthdays in October. It's a fun way to get into the season even if you aren't about to start sending Halloween cards. I'm excited to share this card so let's get into the video. To create this card, I used two of the Dollar Tree alphabet stamp set, a ghost themed sticker set, a paper pack, and decorative cardstock. I started by stamping the word boo repeatedly on a card panel. This is a fun way to create a background that is very customizable. I used a Halloween theme, but you can easily create other words like happy, merry, thanks. The list goes on. If it fits and you can spell it, you can stamp it. To create the word, I used the large lowercase alphabet stamp set that the Dollar Tree carries. To make life easier, since these stamps are so affordable, I bought two sets to help in creating words with repeating letters. This way, I don't have to move the O to spell out boo, but rather use the second set to complete the word. This makes the process faster and a little less tedious than trying to align letters. I use Distress Oxide inks to stamp the word. Ideally, I don't use Distress Oxide inks to stamp with. However, I didn't have any purple pigment ink, and Distress Oxide inks have a similar consistency. Pigment ink works better on lower quality stamps than dye inks. You can, of course, use dye inks. They just may not appear as smooth as they normally would. Stamping the image several times can help smooth out the look, as well as giving the ink a little time to dry back. Dye ink sometimes looks patchy at first and then smooths out as it dries. I use the colors Wilted Violet, Shaded Lilac, and Villainous Potion. Whether you are using individual letters to create words or complete word stamps, a stamping platform really helps with this technique. It aligns the words straight and allows you to use the grid to move the panel a precise amount up, down, or over. I placed my word low in the platform to give myself room so that I could slide the panel up and down to stamp. I stamped my first boo in the middle of the panel off to the right side in wilted violet. Because I'm using a stamping platform, I can add more ink to the word as many times as I like, not having to fear that I'm going to stamp in the wrong place. I slide the panel about three and a half squares or seven eighths of an inch each time to stamp the next boo, either up or down. I stamp the bottom words first using Villainous Potion and then Wilted Violet before going back up and stamping in the Shaded Lilac and then the Wilted Violet again.
After I stamped the word, I applied clear embossing powder to the wet ink. Since Distress Oxide ink takes a while to dry and heat set it with my heat tool. I found that the last three words didn't seem to coat as well with the embossing powder as I'd like. So I went back and stamped over the letters with the Versamark ink. I didn't do such a great job realigning my stamp, but since I'm only applying clear ink and embossing powder, I'm not too concerned. After stamping the images again, I heat embossed them as I did the first time. I trimmed my stamp panel about a quarter of an inch around and created a matte panel using one of the papers I found in the paper pack. I attached the matte panel to a white card base using liquid glue. At some point when I was handling my stamp panel though, I got some smudges and marks on it. Rather than just trying to erase them with a sand eraser, I decided to add some splatter using the same ink colors that I stamped with. I smushed the colors on top of the lid from my stamping platform and added some water to the ink. Then with a brush, I splattered my panel with each color, trying to keep the splatter most dense on the right side around the stamped words. Here comes the second oopsie of the day. I left the panel to dry. However, the splatter that landed on the embossed parts needed significantly more time to dry because the splatter pools on top of it rather than being absorbed. I went to wipe the letters, not realizing that the droplets were much larger than I expected, and I ended up adding more smudges as I swiped my cloth across the panel. This could have been avoided by either waiting longer or dabbing the letters rather than wiping. I could have just added more swipes to blend it in and make it look more like the design, but in the end, it won't even be an issue. When you run into a little hiccup, just keep going. We are too far along to scrap this, and besides, it'll all work out in the end. Once the panel was dry, I attached it to my card base using foam tape. I created the sentiment Happy Haunting much in the same way as the boo using the smaller Dollar Tree alphabet set. Here too, I used a second set of stamps to help me complete the words. This is such a help in filling in letters that I'd otherwise have to move. I first prepped the area with an anti-static tool and then stamped the greeting on two lines in Versamark ink on a piece of black cardstock from the decorative cardstock pack. I applied white embossing powder to the wet ink and heat set it with my heat tool. I trimmed the greeting first with my trimmer into two long strips and then shortened them using my scissors before attaching them to the front of the card using foam tape. As you can see, the greeting ended up hiding the smudges I had made earlier. I added my ghost to the front of the card. It already has foam tape on it, but you can definitely reinforce it if you wish. He's a friendly little guy, no scaring here. Lastly, I added some iridescent dewdrops to the card for some extra shine. And that's it for this card. I think this came out super adorable. The little ghost is so sweet and it reminds me of some of the stamp sets I've seen in recent releases. How about those oopsies? Where did they go? Never underestimate the power of splatter. So what do you think? 
let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave me those comments. I always, always look forward to hearing from you. I hope you'll join me next time for another project. Until then, have a fabulous week, and I hope life treats you kindly. Take care. Bye.